in 2016, when SpaceX unveiled Raptor 1. Rocket scientists around the world couldn't believe what they were seeing. This wasn't simply another engine. It was the first full-flow staged combustion engine to actually fly, a technical achievement many thought impossible. The difference between these two SpaceX engines isn't just engineering, it's the difference between humans staying on Earth forever or becoming a multi-planetary species. The Raptor 1 was revolutionary, but it was far from perfect. With hundreds of external pipes snaking around its body, a heavy heat shield, and complex external electronics, it resembled the chaotic internals of a Bugatti W16 engine. Each of these components represented a potential point of failure when subjected to the most extreme conditions imaginable. Despite these challenges, Raptor 1 was a beast by any standard. Running on liquid methane and oxygen, the Methalox combination, it delivered an impressive 185 metric tons of thrust with a specific impulse of 330 seconds. Why methane? Because unlike traditional rocket fuels, methane can be synthesized on Mars using local resources, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and water from the soil. This wasn't just clever engineering, it was strategic foresight for colonization. But here's where things get interesting. The initial Raptor had a mass of 2,050 kilograms, over two tons of intricate machinery that needed to be lifted against Earth's gravity before it could lift anything else. For every kilogram of engine weight, that's one less kilogram of payload, one less scientific instrument, one less life support system. An engineer's job is done, not when there is nothing left to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. This philosophy became the North Star for the Raptor development team. They didn't just want to improve the engine, they needed to reimagine it completely. While NASA traditionally spends enormous amounts of time and money trying to get something right on the first try, SpaceX embraced a different approach, rapid iteration through controlled failure. This approach wasn't just faster, it revealed possibilities that theoretical models couldn't predict. Every explosion, every meltdown, every unexpected vibration taught them something new. The result? Raptor 3. An engine so dramatically different that it looks like it was designed by aliens rather than rocket scientists. If Raptor 1 was the bold pioneer, Raptor 3 is the sleek, battle-hardened warrior. Gone are the chaotic external pipes. Vanished is the heavy heat shield. Eliminated are the bulky external electronics. What remains is a marvel of minimalist engineering. The complexity hasn't disappeared. It's been hidden. Through innovative manufacturing techniques like 3D metal printing, engineers were able to integrate piping directly into the walls of the engine. The numbers tell a story that almost defies belief. Raptor 1 weighed 2,050 kilograms and produced 185 tons of thrust. Raptor 3? It weighs just 1,525 kilograms, but delivers a staggering 230 tons of thrust, with some versions reaching up to 280 tons. That's a thrust-to-weight ratio jump from 90 to 180, literally doubling the efficiency in a single generation. For comparison, that's like upgrading from a sports car to a hypercar that weighs half as much but has twice the horsepower. The development process mirrors what many software engineers will recognize. You start by building something that works, realize your misconceptions, make a mess patching it together, and then, armed with everything you've learned, rebuild something far more elegant from scratch. Perhaps even more impressive than the design is the production scale. On one documented Raptor 2 engine, the number 569 was spotted, indicating it was the 569th engine produced, despite production only beginning in December 2021. An engine this advanced would typically be produced in small numbers. Yet SpaceX has made the Raptor one of the most produced rocket engines of all time. One of the most brilliant innovations came in the cooling system. Raptor 1 had over 40 separate parts just for cooling. Raptor 3? Zero external cooling components. Instead, it uses regenerative cooling, where the cryogenic methane fuel circulates through channels built directly into the engine bell walls. It's like going from a car with a massive external radiator to one that cools itself with just the air it breathes. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but isn't this just Elon Musk taking credit for other people's work? The truth is more nuanced. While Musk has his controversies, even former SpaceX employees acknowledge his deep involvement in the engineering. 
He discusses rocketry in technical detail that would be impossible to fake, though he's obviously not the one doing CAD drawings or running daily simulations. Raptor 3 can endure more launches and landings before requiring an overhaul, the key to making space travel affordable. But the most important metric can't be measured in tons or seconds, it's measured in human potential. With Raptor 3 powering Starship, we're looking at the first vehicle capable of carrying up to 100 tons of cargo or 100 passengers to the Moon, Mars, and potentially beyond. The difference between Raptor 1 and Raptor 3 could be the difference between a Mars mission being economically impossible versus routine, between space remaining the domain of governments versus becoming accessible to ordinary citizens.